the CareScape R860 nebulizer and suction procedures. After watching the video, the viewer should be able to perform a nebulizer treatment and compensate for the additional flow when using an external flow source. Additionally, utilize the suction procedure. To use the nebulizer function, touch in the top left-hand corner of the touchscreen display. Select the nebulizer tab, and this opens up the nebulizer menu. You have a choice between an aerogen or a pneumatic. Under aerogen, I'm going to talk about it first. You have a time of the treatment and your dosage. To change your dosage, you're going to manipulate the time using the trim knob. So I'm going to select my time, and I'm going to manipulate the trim knob. I'm going to change this, and I'm going to use 2.5 as my example, as the dosage I want to deliver. Once my dosage is correct, I select the start button, and this starts my treatment. If the airway module was in use, it automatically turns off my airway module. When I'm using Aerogen, it's going to stop automatically for your time of your treatment, and it automatically starts sampling, your airway module starts sampling. So I don't have to turn off or back on the airway module. So that's my first choice. Let's go back into Nebulizer. And you can also use the Aerogen continuously. So instead of um, a time, I can just check continuous. And this is nice for when using, delivering my medication via an IV or infusion pump. And it just gives me the message, the nebulizer's on. It doesn't show me a time window because I have to physically go back and stop the treatment. If using an external pneumatic source for my breathing treatment, I select my menu under nebulizer and I select pneumatic. This will allow me to compensate for the additional flow in the circuit. I want to match my flow rate to my external source. I can go all the way up to 12 liters per minute or down to 1. So for this example, I'm going to use 7. So say I have a wall source, external source of 7 liters per minute, I'm going to match it and I just push the start button and this will compensate for the external flow. The message I'm going to get is just that my flow, nebulizer flow compensations on in that left hand, lower left hand corner of the display. And now my minute ventilation is going to be accurate and less incidences of auto triggering. However, your FI2 measured values might be different. It might set off alarms because it doesn't compensate for your gas mixture. So if it's diluting my oxygen or if it's adding more oxygen. So that's one consideration also you want to consider. The most important thing is after your treatment is to turn this off when you turn off the wall source or external source or you're going to have leak alarms, which I'm going to go over. Anytime I use the nebulizer function, either my aerogen or my nebulizer flow compensation, it will automatically shut the airway module off. It'll stop the sampling um, so you won't have your entitled CO2 waveforms. This is always protecting the airway module. Here is an example of what will happen if one forgets to turn off the nebulizer flow compensation after the medication delivery. Say that the wall source or the external flow source is turned off, the ventilator is still thinking that the flow is being delivered, so my measured minute ventilations are going to be much different. And this what uh, might also is cre start the ventilator to auto-trigger, so you might see a higher respiratory rate as what we see as a respiratory rate of 20, the set rate's 15 in this test lung. And then if your leak alarm set appropriately, you might see a circuit leak alarm. And as you can see in my alarm message at the top of my display that I currently have this circuit leak alarm. Now let's focus on the right side of the video. What I did is I enlarged the measured values to show the leak percentage. As you can see, it's at 49%. And what I'm going to do is the flow compensation is still turned on for the nebulizer. I'm going to turn it off and we'll watch what happens to the leak. So I turned it off, it immediately drops to 27%, and then no leak at all. 
So here's my example of my nebulizer flow compensation creating a leak or the ventilator thinks it's a leak because the external source is turned off. To perform a section procedure, touch the menu key and select section. With the section procedure, I can change the percentage of the oxygen being delivered during the procedure. And I can also assign it to favorites, which I did. The section functionality is designed as an open section procedure, which is additionally useful any time that there needs to be a patient circuit disconnect. The section procedure has three phases. Let's look to the general messages section of the display and you notice the three phases. The first phase is the section oxygenation phase. Phase two is section standby and phase three is oxygenation. During phase one, suction oxygenation, the ventilator delivers increased oxygen for two minutes or until the patient is disconnected. During phase two, suction standby, the ventilator enters suction standby for two minutes or until the patient is reconnected. Phase three, oxygenation. The ventilator resumes ventilating at the current settings, delivering the increased oxygen value for two minutes. For my next examples, I'm going to be using multiple split screens. The first example is a circuit disconnect without hitting section. As you can see, flow will stop being delivered, how my alarms will still be active. Now a circuit disconnect using the section feature. Section selected, and now I'm going to disconnect. Once I disconnect, the flow will stop the screen also freezes, so ventilation has paused during this time. When I reconnect, the ventilator starts where it's from and starts delivering breaths again. And continue to deliver the increased oxygen value for two minutes unless the procedures stop. 